How you doing? My name is Dominic Pasolano. Uh, I'd served as the head football coach at Allen B. Shepherd High School the last nine years. Uh, very appreciative of uh, Chief Pigskin and giving me this opportunity here to uh, speak tonight. Uh, and in this session here, uh, we're going to talk about uh, program turnaround, uh, and namely uh, looking at targeting uh, personnel, both as uh, players, personnel players, and then uh, coaches. So this is my contact information here. Uh, if there's anything discussed tonight that you have questions on, or if there's any strategies you want to, uh, you, uh, you know, ask for, and I'll shoot an email out to you, or you could contact me either uh, via Twitter, or email, anything you want, I'll get that out to you. Uh, so quick background, quick background of Shepherd High School. Uh, Shepherd High School is a 6A high school in the south suburbs of Chicago. Uh, it's a very unique situation in that it draws from six uh, diverse communities. And the program had had spot success over the course of uh, the history, but uh, stepping in uh, to the program uh, in 2009, uh, it had uh, struggled uh, both with numbers and participation numbers and then qualifying for the playoffs uh, one time in that 15-year time frame. And what we were able to do in, in uh, going through the process of trying to turn this program around is the timing was right in that we qualified for the playoffs uh, for the first four years. But at that time, it was more of a coach's program. Uh, and then through the two years, uh, we went through in a rebuild. Uh, so we looked at it like we rebuilt it twice. We turned it around and flipped it into what was now uh, a player's program. And we made the playoffs seven out of those nine years. And in the last three years here, we feel a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about here tonight played a big role in the seasons that we had uh, this past year and the year before. Uh, qualifying for the playoffs, winning a playoff game, and establishing a culture where the players had more ownership and buy-in. So I know if you're, if you're a uh, new head coach or an assistant that's uh, joining a new head coach and maybe you've been at a program now uh, a year now and you're trying to turn around a struggling program, it could, it's, it's a huge task and you see all these different things that you have to attack and try to uh, have a game plan in place uh, to see some improvement and see some positives uh, moving your program in the right direction. And what we always felt is whether you're at a 1A, 2A, or 3A school or a 6A, 7A, 8A schools, these were areas that you could pinpoint and make an immediate impact. And as you'll see here tonight as we go along, uh, a lot of the stuff you could use uh, without having to implement an extra fundraiser or ask for more resources or act, ask for additional uh, funding in your budget. So what we're looking at here tonight is the points of emphasis is retention of athletes, program marketing, and then if we get to uh, staff development and retention of coaching staff. Uh, as we know nowadays, there's huge challenges placed for us football coaches as far as getting kids out to the playing field and then getting kids uh, staying out all four years. So a topic that I'm very passionate about and talking about and seeking out information and, uh, you know, and, and building uh, uh, within a program is this idea here, a retention of athletes. And I know usually the first thing that you're going to talk about is marketing the program because you got to get the kids out. But I just felt like where we're at right now in the offseason, heading into the winter, uh, in the winter offseason, and the importance of the weight room and the importance of the offseason and keeping tabs on kids, we're going to start with the retention of athletes. Uh, we had the good fortune the last two years uh, of uh, we're having uh, Coach Gary Corhona and a Hall of Fame coach be a part of our coaching staff. And he had always mentioned uh, you want to have uh, 20 or shoot for uh, 24 year senior football players. And like all of us, we love those benchmarks. Uh, we want benchmarks to be able to go in those targets, uh, to be able to know what we're working for and driving uh, the strategies that we're implementing. So what we did is we came up with this idea uh, about four or five years ago is that we're going to shoot for 25 to 34 year seniors in order to get that 20, year, or 20 uh, player mark. So how we broke this up and we set up this retention program of athletes is we broke it up in the off season and the in season. Pretty self-explanatory. And then what we wanted to do is we wanted to utilize everybody's talents on the coaching staff. Uh, the biggest thing is respectful of their time, uh, the coach's time. Uh, that you have in-house and in-building and also their time with their family. 
and you were going to get more buy-in with that coaching staff if you were looking and, and directing uh, these efforts towards what they're passionate about and what their uh, uh, strengths are. So in, in addition, like all of us, uh, we do not have time to create additional fundraisers and additional resources. As we go through this tonight here and you see this retention program, you'll see uh, many of the things may cost some money, but there's also a lot of uh, individual strategies that aren't going to cost you an additional fundraiser. So what we're looking for in transitioning to in here is right now is our off-season retention program. We'll start with there and especially maybe more uh, applicable to what your situation is right now in the off-season. So the big buzzword right now amongst all of us coaches is uh, culture and culture is important. Culture of the locker room and trying to take your values and transplant those into the locker room with those kids. And what we felt like if we were going to identify and we could get our situation and, and uh, establish a culture to turning things around was we were going to have to get those kids to be those four-year senior players. And it would give us a chance to have a consistent program throughout the course of every year. And where we wanted to start uh, this with was building relationships with our athletes. That was the most pivotal thing and the first thing that we always wanted to establish. And we felt that we could make a quick impact by uh, you know, being a relationship-based coaches. Kids are not going to just trust you right off the bat. Kids are going to ask why and what. So what we did was we wanted to make sure that we set up the first thing uh, where we were trying to show them that we respect their experience. Uh, we wanted to define everything for our players. We wanted to tell, explain what being a competitor was, what accountability was. The first step in how we set this up was being able to grab everybody all right, and have these individual meetings. Following, uh, as I said, uh, we had qualified for the playoffs the first four years. Uh, we had a rough mark uh, at, at, the one, at year five, uh, finishing 0-9. Uh, and, and the individual meetings were born out of necessity. And this was something that we could do, and this was a strategy that you could do to make a quick impact. And you could set this up maybe according to whatever your situation is and the numbers that you have within the building uh, to just maybe the upcoming seniors, uh, the upcoming seniors and juniors, or the whole program entirely. And there's been years that we've just done the returning kids that are going to be transitioning up to varsity or years that we wanted, to, you know, we had maybe a special class uh, that we wanted to touch base with those freshmen in order to keep them out and have those individual meetings. So how we set this up is we had three pivotal uh, meetings. Uh, the first one was in November. Uh, November was just to basically touch base after the season, make sure nobody in, in, uh, leaves with a sour taste in their mouth, and that there's a positive uh, end to the season and transition into the off season. And we don't even talk about football in that meeting. Uh, we ask about their family. We ask about their situation. We bring up uh, any topics that we know pertain to that individual kid. And we're going to meet with every single individual kid from the number one player that you're depending on to make the plays on Friday all the way down to that last scout team member. Because as we believe is football's a huge numbers game. And we wanted to make sure that everybody was involved and felt uh, a connection uh, within the program. The next one we had was in January, the transition back and sort of give that rah rush speech to get them uh, motivated for the off season in the weight room and winning the squat rack. And also then coming in May when we had our summer meeting and had passed out our summer winner's manual to talk about everybody getting a big push here for the summer football and going through every individual, uh, defining everything for them and, and just explaining uh, our expectations. So the next program that we looked at in the off season is the freshman sophomore retention program. We had run into a deal where we noticed that we had huge drop-offs, significant drop-offs uh, from our kids freshman to sophomore year. As you all know, there's different things that are plugging their attention or grabbing their attention. And we saw that you know kids would gravitate towards coming out for our team, but we didn't do any little extra stuff in order to keep them uh, the transition and make that jump from freshman sophomore year. Uh, what we did then was we took all the in-building guys and we divided them amongst our in-building guys. Those guys check, check, uh, track the grades, discipline the kids, hold social events within their groups, uh, form uh, a situation where they could go to a basketball game, softball game, but they're forming a bond with each coach and they're forming a connection uh, with the program. 
And the biggest thing that we tried to do was have some sort of contact once a month with the parents and players. That something positive is coming from our program and it keeps our logo, it keeps our football program in front of their face. Uh, bump-ins, we would do bump-ins. Being able to see those uh, freshmen as a varsity coach walk through the hallway and, and, and acknowledge them and acknowledge them by name and make a contact with them, all right, was a way that we kept them interested and invested into our program. And then the next thing is no matter the kid's situation, and we have a variety of different situations within our, uh, within our program here, was making contact to whoever the legal guardian and parent was at home. Because what we're ending up doing is we're getting those parents on our side to keep that kid coming out for football, to see that there's someone taking an invested interest in their kid's uh, life and uh, development. So from that, the role of the head coach and what I did uh, within this retention program was I set up an action plan. And as you could see, we want some sort of structure to streamline our efforts and keep a sort of discipline uh, and, and keeping this action plan in place and these programs in place. So what I did was I believe in the power of the pen. Any little quick handwritten note, all right, shows an individual attention to that person and, and it sort of stands out and it makes them feel that they're a special part of that program. So what we'd like to do is in the November there is send a quick little handwritten note out to that parent and player, as we all know. Uh, I mean, there's all, there's a ton of, it's a ton of work to do but you'll see here later on in the presentation that you can make it a little, just using uh, the program that we have, all right, in order to make a quick note to stand out to them. And then in the next thing in January there, as you can see, all right, we did a level highlight, all right? We're gonna send a little quick flyer that we made out, all right, the highlight, some of the highlights from the freshman season, and then to those freshman players, and then a highlight for those sophomore players, a flyer that was created but you're keeping, your, you're keeping football in front of them, you're outlining positive, the small victories that you need to uh, sort of emphasize, all right, to keep uh, everything positive, staying out for football, retaining those kids within your program. And then uh, what we had, as you can see in March, is maybe they start to, they're on the fence, uh, talking to their friends if they want to come out for summer football or go to that meeting in May as that uh, meeting draws near, is having a whole program highlight. We know when you're trying to turn the corner. We know when you're trying to take that next step or maybe you had a struggling season. You got to look for every little victory that you had and you could put that in, uh, out there all right, and communicate that out there so you're sending that, that positive uh, vibe about your program. And then finally, depending on whoever came to the May meeting that we had for the summer meeting uh, for our summer football, and as we know in Illinois, uh, summer football is an important part uh, we, I would send out a, a quick handwritten letter once again, all right, sort of like a rah-rah letter to every individual kid in that, pro, uh, that showed up to that meeting to get their parent and try to get that parent hooked and get that player hooked uh, for that upcoming uh, summer season. All right, so uh, next thing and then we transitioned into was the off-season program. And in our off-season program, we split this down in the winter and summer. Uh, and you'll see on the PowerPoint slide, uh, you know, we, we talked about at the first bullet there, uh, there was protein and uh, peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Uh, we set up, and as you can see, we emphasized the three-sport athlete, the two-sport athlete. We never wanted to uh, do anything that was detrimental to their experience. Uh, we wanted to have a program uh, that pushed all sports. Uh, we just feel like it's their experience. They're only going to get one opportunity to play football, wrestling, basketball, track, uh, we have coaches that are in-house uh, that coach other sports, uh, that are uh, very involved in other sports, and we wanted everybody working together within that hallway to promote all our programs. So any kid that was in the, uh, not in a sport like many of you have, you set up your off-season program. Well, the biggest thing that we felt is within our off-season program, it was all still geared towards retention. We, uh, through connections with uh, one of our teachers and uh, a former player, we were able to get a discount on protein. And after every workout there, we would, uh, with the blenders that we had set up, we'd have protein shakes for our players. Uh, I think, and we would all joke about this and laugh about this, but I think a lot of our players continued to come back to our off-season workouts for the simple fact so they could get that protein shake and then go up there and carry around that shake for everybody to see while they waited for the activity bus. 
but every little thing that you're doing to make that kid feel uh, that they're in, an individual that's a part of something that's a big deal uh, and, and drawing that link to pull that individual in is something that we tried to do there and any, everything we've done. The next thing too is we'll discuss in a minute here is TPW Club. Uh, er everything that we've done, uh, just like you, we've tried the teams, the drafting, uh, point system, uh, everything, you know, and when we discuss this here tonight is it's all good and it works for in everybody's different situations, but what we've tried to do is streamline and simplify that down so it meets more of the individual. And from that, uh, we try to create competition uh, in our offseason here because uh, we feel when you have competition, it's going to make it fun, it's going to build morale. All right, and especially when you tap into the individual competition and team competition, all right, kids get excited and they're a part of that yelling and chanting, all right, and that's what will keep them coming back and retain them uh, in your off-season program. A quick little incentive, uh, as we all know, the, 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 the thing we all want to always avoid is walking down that hallway and you see that kid never coming uh, and he turns down uh, the other hallway. Uh, so what we built in is utilizing what's available to all us coaches is a spring football game. And through attendance, uh, the kids that meet an attendance mark, uh, we're able to board a bus uh, and head to our spring football game. So whatever your situation may be, uh, if you have parent support that could carpool and drive or uh, your school's willing to uh, get a bus or allow you to use your maybe uh, activity bus uh, to drive uh, to a spring game, all right, these are all different things that we're trying to do t in order to not have to create another fundraiser, all right, and then there are simple, quick, easy uh, ways to strategies to implement in order to help you keep kids out and keep kids excited about football. So what we'll see here now is uh, this is what we were talking about in terms of how we were able to take our off-season uh, weightlifting incentive program uh, and simplify that and streamline it into what developed, uh, as you saw on the other side, the TPW program, uh, TPW off-season challenge. And we've, like I said, done uh, this. It started as the Ironman Club, transitioned into our Pride Club, and what we've always tried to do is everything is review, refine, uh, and it's been refined multiple times. And as you know, there's, as we said, different coaches going off the, uh, with different demands with their families uh, that are in-house or coaching other sports. And it, be, it, it just can become a, a huge task to tally the points and tally all this. So we've tried to get it so it was easier to coordinate uh, for the coaches, all right, and simplifying it down. And also, too, as we know, uh, kids may not understand uh, kids may forget uh, what some of the uh, uh, ways that you could uh, gain a point or lose a point. And those were just from our experiences and what worked for us. So what we tried to do in, in leading into this here, the next few slides is, we didn't call it testing. Uh, we didn't call it testing in the off season because once again, I mean, test sort of has a bad connotation with these kids. And we know that kids got excited around that time when the NFL Combine came on. So what we did is anytime we were going to test our kids, we were going to run a combine. And it was a way that we were going to test them in, uh, right before spring break and right before the end of the year, all right, to sort of lead into this incentive program uh, heading into the summer and motivate them to win in the squat rack. So as you could see, I put this on here just to see. We had, and like a lot of people, you steal from everybody. It was a huge amount of uh, different ways and all these different ways that you could earn points. And it just became difficult to coordinate and also keep kids interested in it and bought in. So from the Pride Pro point system, we set up three different categories. So we narrowed it down to where we were like, we're gonna have you in Heisman, All-American, All-State. And these were the different incentives that we built into it. So as you'll see here in a minute, you'll see the different criteria for each of those areas. And where we picked this up from was, I think a lot of people have uh, grabbed onto it and bought, was the Culture Defeat Strategy book by Randy Jackson. What pertained is you go along, and, and one of the big, uh, as far as what you're trying to overcome or uh, implement or change with the uh, mindset within the program is this idea of toughness and battle and adversity. 
So what we sold to our kids is this idea is TPW is tough people win. And I can't uh, uh, push it enough is this is a great book and a resource uh, for you to go out there and get some ideas in terms of uh, off-season motivation and uh, building a culture within a program. So the logo that we were able to put together from one of our uh, apparel uh, guys, uh, we placed all over the weight room, placed all over our uh, t-shirts, uh, and it was just something that we sold our kids on. And it's uh, needless to say, I think we, we saw a great benefit from it this year. Uh, and then we transitioned this into uh, the off-season incentive program that we had last year. Before, as you could see uh, from the previous slides, you saw that we had three categories. And from year to year, it changed. Uh, a year we would test squat clean, 40-yard dash. Or we would do uh, attendance, discipline, 10-yard dash, pro agility. You know, we wanted something to be able to simplify it down. Uh, that was easy to target as far as kids would understand. And then also with the time that you have at the end, uh, school year when you wanted to uh, test and you had these kids all over the place in different sports. So one thing that we utilized and, and uh, we really relied on was our athletic development, our weightlifting and athletic development. From the kids in, in this in, uh, athletic development, the kids that were in a winter sport or three sport athletes or two sport athletes, they were able to get their uh, weightlifting done uh, because our offensive coordinator had run it. The kids that weren't in a program uh, we're able to come after school and, and part, uh, participate in that. So what we looked at is for each category, for you to qualify for the Heisman, you had to hit all three marks. For you to qualify for the All-American, you had to hit all three marks, all right, in this past season here for squad, bench, and attendance. We just felt it was an easy route uh, to go in order to test kids at that last push at the end of the season. So with our athletic development program, as we said, uh, they had testing at the end of the year. Any kid that was in baseball that might not be able to come after school, we took his squat max from that athletic development. The kids that obviously came after school with the coaches that ran the off-season program, we took their uh, best squat max in that uh, if the after-school squat max or the athletic development squat max, whatever may have been the best one. And the whole idea is we want to build kids' confidence. Uh, confidence is never overrated. Uh, so trying to get them something where they saw that all their work paid off was going to be better for us in the long run than if we just you know, nitpicked and uh, kept guys from achieving one of these marks. All right, so what we wanted to do is this, is your, your ultimate goal is to have six to seven kids, and, and like I said, this is all dependent on the size of your school, the size of your program, but somewhere between, like for us, how it worked was six to seven kids fell in the Heisman category, that those kids had to work, that those kids had to strive in order to hit that top mark, and then you could, and those kids were going to be looked at like those were the kids, those were the studs, and those were the kids that hit those marks. Then the next part, the All-American category, was it was sort of like you wanted to bring the next 30 kids or 25 to 30 kids that hit that mark. Uh, and from those, we always felt like you would see those fringe kids, uh, those kids that you would see beeline down the other end of the hallway when they saw you walking down the hallway because they weren't coming to workouts. And where we always looked at too was, as you know, you're going to have those kids that show up to every single workout and not even come close to hitting those marks. So what we had for those guys, and it was sort of like a surprise, were hustle awards. Uh, to, to sort of toss a bone to those kids, those program kids, or maybe a kid that uh, was on the fringe is still staying out, all right, to highlight them. And it, it, this, like, and, and it could, it, like I said, it's all adapt to your program. Uh, maybe four years ago, we wouldn't have had these marks for squat bench, or we wouldn't have had these marks for workouts. Uh, maybe down the road, you may have higher uh, weight weights for the squat and bench. But what you're doing is you're trying to uh, put everything out there, all right, to show them, like, guys, everything's in place for this is for you to have the best possible experience. Uh, this is not the coach's experience. This is your experience. And if you don't take advantage of this experience by being a part of all these off-season challenges, you're going to come back and look and regret that. So, Going back in and like moving into the off-season summer, uh, we do everything possible to incentive, incentive, incentive. 
And all of us, uh, in Illinois at least, know the importance of summer football. And we also know that uh, you know, everybody loves, the kids love their summer, the parents love uh, the summer to get away. And we wanted to do something a little bit extra to sort of sell the uh, summer and have sort of like uh, something that we always ha hung our hat on. So going back and stealing the concept from Jim Tressel was this idea of a winner's manual. And back in 2009, the first meeting we ever had, uh, one of the issues at Shepherd was kids showing up in the summer. So the packet uh, detailing an outline uh, the whole summer, all right, we sold to them on this is the summer winner's manual. And this summer winner's manual is significant towards this team. And it had the program's theme on it. It had the program, uh, maybe that season's uh, theme, uh, that season's sort of logo on it. And it was like, this was always going to represent you guys. And this was something that if you followed through, you would be a winner in the game of life. And we just didn't include uh, the standard paperwork, uh, the standard summer calendar. Uh, we tried to do everything possible to put motivational stuff, stuff that we knew themes that were going to fit uh, that football team that year, uh, t things that we were looking in order to take the next step with or maybe somehow overcome. Uh, that's what we were going to uh, slide in there and be a part of it. And also in, uh, put in our summer uh, incentive program. So we took something that could be viewed as, uh, uh, this is just a standard paperwork packet for the summer passed out to that kid and try to sell it on something that everybody believed in and hung their hat on. Uh, one of the things that we were able to do, and I know, uh, you know this would take an extra maybe uh, fundraising or resources given to you, uh, but is a summer team camp. And throughout the course of the nine years, we've been able to take our kids to a summer team camp, a retreat camp. Uh, at a college and this was the best thing that we, we had going in our program as we said before uh, you know we have a lot of kids that come from all these different communities have all these different backgrounds uh, a lot of our kids I would say in the 145 kids in our program 80% uh, to maybe 90% never played football before high school and then from that maybe 60 to 65 maybe never even played organized athletics before high school so they didn't understand what it was like being a part of a team, uh, being uh, accountable, uh, being a teammate, a team player. So from that, we were able to really do a big uh, deal at the summer team camp where we were able to uh, come together as a team. And you eat in the cafeteria and you stay in a dorm together. And it was a huge bonding experience for us. And at the same time, too, uh, kids being kids, kids love camps. Uh, they want to make you make it fun. Uh, we never held meetings. We allowed them to take their Xbox and PlayStation 2 to summer camp. Uh, they were able to go out there and have, uh, you know, the football sessions. But then once they walked off the football session, that ended there. And uh, we really come together every year. And uh, everybody looked forward and I think stayed out within our program uh, to be uh, on that team camp. And then uh, what we've had is, like I said, incentives throughout the course of the summer. Uh, and if you have questions on it or want to know anything, I could, I could shoot that out to you or a sample summer's winner's manual. But the incentives were always built in with our team camp. And then, uh, like all of you, we've done different decals. Uh, but what we're looking at is any way to make it where the kids have gone out and they've seen uh, a benefit for their hard work uh, within that quick time frame. Uh, I mean, we could all sell like, hey, this hard work is going to pay off down the road. Uh, and rightfully so, week one and through week nine, but kids want to see something that's going to make uh, a quick uh, turn for their hard work. And then the thing, the biggest thing that we did this past season that was a big deal for us, and I felt kept kids coming back because it goes back to the whole things is you get the chance going and the yelling going and the hoorah going, was these ideas here at competition circuits. Uh, leading into the summer, uh, we came together as a coaching staff and sort of was like a little bonding deal for us. Uh, we drafted players. Uh, the head coach, myself, I was the commissioner, and all the other coaches that were a part of our summer uh, varsity program is we drafted players. And with those teams, we had set up uh, for our workouts, uh, and the coaches worked out with the kids and worked out, and, and we sort of had that competition start to develop between the coaches and uh, the other coaches and the, each team and whatnot. So we felt like through these competition circuits, 
uh, we always sort of had a rough transition uh, as you go from the weight room out to the practice field for your summer football stuff. So these circuits here also provided a way to sort of boost and kickstart uh, that football uh, uh, football fundamentals or however you set up your football aspect uh, when you transition from the weight room out to the football field. And from that we were able to target uh, key football situations and techniques and built in and make it a fun aspect within our competition circuits. And as we all know is uh, kids struggle with dealing with adversity or dealing with uh, defeat and it allowed us to sort of talk about that and talk about maybe the themes or talk about whatever we wanted, our goals and values, and what we wanted to accomplish that day, uh, either that day in the summer practice or over the course of the uh, rest of the summer and the season. So as you'll see here, this is just examples. Uh, these are pictures that we take and examples of some of the stuff that we've talked about here right now uh, within our off-season retention. And in terms of uh, this case, here's an example of all the stuff we've talked about uh, from winter. And I think, like I said, a big part of our retention is how we go about this winter off season. So you'll see over there on the left, you'll see we always like to have a daily competition, as we said, and sort of a daily challenge. So in this case here, we uh, had a challenge for dips, or we would have a challenge for even curls. Uh, we would have a challenge for tire flips and so forth, pull-ups. And what we always like to do is name the challenge uh, after something that would get the kids excited. Uh, you know, I mean, being in Chicago here, I mean, kids know about Walter Payton, kids know about Brian Erlacher, and it was sort of like a quick name that we threw to get him excited and get him bought in to that challenge. Uh, in the middle there were pictures there of our uh, challenge winners, uh, the Heismans and the All-Americans, and we did everything possible to post those pictures around school during the year, post them on social media, all right, and get their, uh, that picture where their achievement was out there in the public so everybody could, you know, give them that pat on the back or acknowledge uh, their hard work and commitment. And as you'll see there, and you'll hear in a little bit here, we do everything possible uh, to get their name on something. Uh, the more you have their name on something, the more they're like, and as corny as it is, uh, the kids, I mean our kids at least, uh, were really proud of that and would take that home, I believe, and uh, sort of like get bought in. Uh, it was some of them, it was the first time they've ever earned something uh, where their name was on it. And what we ended up doing was we s borrowed uh, the certificate format uh, that they have for the uh, all school banquets and they make every year. So we kept that format and we kept that and we applied it to ourselves with the logo for our uh, program and then be able to uh, sort of adapt it to what we were doing. And then on the right, is sort of like we sold it here, like we had uh, the Hall of Fame, all right, and the kids that met that challenge uh, the previous day, and we would tape that up, and maybe you don't have access to a quick, uh, you know, budget to get one of those uh, goal boards, or, uh, uh, you know, maybe your athletic director would lose his mind if you wrote uh, the names up on there with marker. I've seen that done at other schools, but what we did was we just used athletic tape and we'd put the athletic tape up there and we could change it day to day. We could ch change the, uh, whatever challenge that we were doing the day before, all right, and throw that up there and we knew that everybody was going to walk through uh, that weight room uh, because they would walk through the weight room, they would walk through the course of that uh, when they took their PE class, uh, other students, and then other students would start to identify and be like, oh, hey, look at, you know, Joe here had, uh, 25 dips and was second on the dip challenge. So we did everything uh, possible to make it where kids didn't want to miss. Uh, and it, I mean, as we all know too, kids still missed, obviously. But we're doing everything possible there to get their name out there, to make it where it's like they didn't want to be that guy that wasn't a part of the fun stuff that was going on after school. Then this is uh, some of the stuff in uh, highlights. Uh, the points that we talked about here from the off season uh, in the terms of summer. Uh, the four pictures uh, on the left and right are just all examples of uh, competition stations that we set up. And we wanted to teach them what it was like to compete and be competitors. Uh, one of the values of our program is always compete. And we just felt like this was a way to, uh, you know, maybe we weren't going to see uh, quick uh, results on the scoreboard uh, but we knew that we could get it and we could sell that so the kids continued to play hard all season. 
So from that, we've carried that every year uh, through the good years and the two couple hard years, and we've tried to teach them uh, here with competition uh, stations to learn how to compete and maybe learn from uh, falling on the ground and not winning that uh, rep or what were some of the ways that they responded to it, uh, whether as a winner or loser in that respect. And then also, as I said earlier, is make it fun. Well, at the same time, you're learning the uh, important techniques and skills and drills uh, that you need for the season. So as you see, it was just old school board drill, one-on-one -on -one blocking, leverage, hand positioning, uh, pad level and whatnot, and they would just fight quick whistle when uh, you know, one of the guys drove the other guy to the end of the board. The other ball uh, security and takeaway drills, uh, and then the tug of war was an, you know, an example that we've done uh, at one time throughout the course of the uh, summer for a competition station, and then the one-on-one -on -one tire pull. And at first the kids were like, so we're going to do this in our pads, like the tug of war and the tire pull. And I said, yeah, you're going to compete in your pads. So it sort of built up the enthusiasm and excitement for it. And as I said earlier, we try to name everything. Uh, the ch the take a shot that that'll get kids excited about it. So here we are in Big Ten country. We named certain competition stations after Big Ten uh, mascots. So you had the Badgers because they're known for their offensive linemen, the Hawkeyes, uh, the Buckeyes, and then the Wolverines. And then in the middle there's an example of our title page there, uh, just how we start off uh, every summer winner's manual. Uh, they get the kids excited with the logo and the theme for the year and kids come start to, with anticipation uh, you know start to ask you know what's the theme going to be or uh, you know what, 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 what what's going to be in the summer winner's manual but you're building it something uh, that is significant to them uh, and makes it memorable for them in their experience all right so now in season retention uh, what we'd like to do, and, and, and I know you're all always trying to, how can we bring the whole program together? Uh, how can we have those freshman coaches and those sophomore coaches uh, bought into the whole program? Uh, how can we spotlight uh, that kid that might, as we know, is a B-team player, and we've known the history of that, a B-team player can end up being a significant player for you on varsity uh, because he hits that growth spurt. Uh, but he's maybe not playing a lot on the freshman level. So how can we maybe identify him and spotlight him so people, re you know, we, he felt like he's been recognized in a part of this program. And the thing we've done is this idea here of Monday Spotlight. And I know different, pro uh, different areas across the state or maybe different states have different times and when they play their lower levels or how they have their lower levels structured. But with us, we were able to have the whole program come together on Mondays. So every Monday at the end of practice here, we came together. Uh, we would gather from the freshman coach, uh, three kids that we nominated, and then he would give a brief description why uh, he nominated them. Uh, three kids from the sophomore coaches, and he would give a brief, you know, why he nominated those kids. Uh, we tried to do different kids. Uh, we also didn't want to go like, well, it's three, you know, uh, scout team players. I mean, you want to have some good players in there so it keeps its credibility. So what we usually saw, what ended up happening was the best players were usually spotlighted uh, earlier in the season. And then by three or four, you started to see those kids, you were, those fringe kids, you were trying to keep out uh, spotlighted after that. So what we did is we brought everybody together, and then the coach, uh, the head coach myself, would stand up and uh, follow through, uh, go through a description for each kid, then call that kid's name up, and he would come up in front of the entire program. And it kept everything where is, is, you know, it was a way everybody would hoot and holler and, and you know, talk little uh, stuff, but we were coming together as an uh, entire program. And we were fortunate uh, to have t-shirts that we could hand out, but if you're in a situation where maybe you don't have funding or fundraiser for a t-shirt, a simple certificate like I showed earlier uh, with the TPW program is something that you could make to hand those kids. And everything that you could possibly do to put their name on it is something that will you know register with that kid and, and hook line and sinker him into your program and then at the end however you have it set up uh, we were able then to uh, have our breakdown and whatever your breakdown is we had the freshmen always huddled up around everybody with the seniors juniors and sophomores break that entire program down so in terms of in-season retention plan with our varsity and sophomores 
I mean, as we know, like kids come out and it's the battle of uh, attrition or it's the battle of attrition early on uh, within the program, you're probably uh, taking over and trying to turn around and it maybe has struggled. And as we know too, there's some uh, administrators, they might not know if it's stuffed or pumped, but they could look on a sideline and see, wow, this guy's got a lot of kids participating uh, and it buys you time. So the biggest thing was targeting in season in terms of varsity players and then sophomore players. So what we looked at is uh, limited uh, Saturday film. And I know there's probably some guys out there looking at me shaking their head and they're big you know, Saturday film guys. But what we saw is with our situation and maybe there's other situations out there, our kids had a lot of obligations on Saturday. So how we tried to do is we tried to set that up so we watched more of our film at the start of practice on Monday. Uh, kids that needed treatment from trainers, uh, then we would talk to and talk to their parents to get in and on Saturday morning. Uh, we were also, uh, this is some of it stemmed from transportation issues with our players. So any of the Saturday film and the old run a mile on Saturday and work out in the weight room, uh, we sort of minimized it down uh, and taking the approach as less is more. And in the long run, we'll keep those uh, kids out. And then the biggest thing too is condensing practice down. Uh, you know, condensing practice down and, and, and making it to where we are able to uh, sort of put those iPads that uh, everybody's starting to get from uh, your school district into use and get the, that practice on film and then uh, sort of save your kids' legs and save your kids uh, from a beating, you know, just the, the wear and tear of the season uh, and get them in after practice and condense practice down uh, so it's a quick, fast practice and they can then watch the film that we've had from practice that day uh, right there after, uh, before they get on the activity bus. Uh, the next thing too is power of the fist bump. Uh, one of the things re, uh, referring back and uh, I pulled from that Randy Jackson book, uh, Culture Defeat Strategy, was uh, a study that was done on interaction between players and coaches on a team and it did it translate to success uh, on the court on the field and where they looked at it was the NBA, uh, NBA. and the season they went through and they tallied all the marks and one thing they found was uh, the top two teams that year uh, that had the most interaction uh, were in the NBA Finals. And then the team with the most interaction uh, was the NBA champion. So pulling that, it was like, oh, that, it's something you know, that uh, is an easy, quick thing we could do. So throughout the course of the practice, it's just a quick fist bump, a quick fist bump with those scout team players, uh, just sort of like, hopefully that's a, a way that you can keep them, encourage them to keep giving you effort and keep coming back every day to be a part of that team. And then finally, uh, what we're, where we're at in, in terms of uh, busing in kids and uh, the transportation situation was, at the end of the day, we didn't want to just cut those kids loose. Uh, so we were worried about kids getting in trouble or supervision and taking off and never coming back. So we developed a game uh, day meal plan, uh, pregame meals. And overall, it then sort of turned into, I think some of these kids just, right there on Friday, stick around there on Friday uh, for the simple fact to get that meal. Uh, and, and more so those fringe kids, uh, those kids that you need uh, to be a part of that team. And there was different ways that you could probably go about it uh, in terms of if you don't have the budget for it. But it was just another way to sort of set your uh, program apart. Uh, the little extra things and going the extra mile for those individuals to keep them sort of hooked into your program. All right, so uh, transitioning in now to the freshman in season. And what we were looking at, and I know a lot of guys maybe have, do, have done this, is getting everybody on that game field uh, on the freshman level. And I know the first thing you have to do is sell it on those freshman coaches. Uh, and they're, you know, uh, freshman coaches are probably the most competitive coaches sometimes in your program. But being able to get those kids out there and try them in ditch, different situations uh, because for the simple fact, many of the kids that we grabbed never played football before and you didn't want to lose them right away. So something where it's like you don't stress the wins and uh, losses down at that level, but you get them out there and you get them out there playing. Uh, and we felt that uh, in a variety of roles, playing in a variety of roles, uh, that we were able to retain kids better with that. 
And the next thing too, and this is pulled from Matt Sepner from uh, Providence Catholic High School, guy I was fortunate to play for, was don't run the uh, rosy cheek kids off because many times those kids are going to end up being your big uh, hogs and linemen on the uh, varsity. So as you know with those linemen, many of them the first time they ever put on pads is that freshman year because they couldn't make weight uh, or they were the overweight kid that uh, you know just couldn't uh, stick it out maybe for a uh, feeder football or a feeder program. So what we tried to do is not condition those big kids and put them maybe on agility pads or put them on the sled uh, until we got them once again uh, hook, line, and sinker into our program. Uh, and I felt like that uh, paid big dividends for us uh, in keeping those big kids out. And then the next thing is going back to the power of the bumping. Uh, looked at, okay, here were the number of varsity coaches that were in-house. Uh, let's go through each week and pick some random kids, uh, see where we could, you know, walk in uh, across their path in the uh, cafeteria when we were doing supervision or in the hallway there. And then the biggest thing is identifying them by name. And it was not just the kids that are on the fringe, those were the kids we were targeting, but also too making sure those uh, good kids, the best players, uh, get that acknowledgement too. So it, as we uh, move into here, uh, program marketing. And I know a lot of guys are doing a great job now marketing, uh, marketing football, uh, marketing their program to get them out freshman year. Uh, we are in a situation, we were in a situation where we are in an area that is sort of like a feeding frenzy. And with Catholic schools, they do a very good job of selling and marketing uh, their schools. And we hit, were up against that and uh, we knew that in order for us to sort of have some success here and give ourselves a su uh, success, uh, we had to increase our numbers and market our football program. Whether that was the kid at the Pee Wee team or youth football team or the kid that never played football before that's getting off that bus uh, for the first day of school. So the keys to marketing and uh, sort of having a structure uh, to look at and build from and how we sort of created everything within this marketing plan was first is making football cool. As we know now, uh, kids don't have to be uh, in athletics uh, or a club or activity uh, to sort of be uh, part of a social group. Uh, they could go on social media, it's, there's no problem with them jumping on the bus uh, at 3 o'clock or 3.30 whenever school gets out. So you have to do something in order to make it be cool. Uh, there are so many things that are pulling their attention, uh, you have to have things that you can go and, and make it to where, man, that, like now nah, I'm getting attention from this sport. The next thing was is we were going to make them uh, and their parents and anybody associated with the program walking billboards. Uh, and this was visibility and accessibility. Uh, you have your logo or brand or your football logo and football name on a t-shirt. A simple t-shirt that you knew they were going out into the community with and everybody started to see that. And then going back to what I said earlier was the power of the pen. Uh, a quick handwritten note uh, was going to sort of give you that uh, extra step or extra mile in order to get that person to feel like, wow, this guy took the time to uh, acknowledge me or identify and know that I'm a part of this program or know that he wants uh, me to be a part of this program. And then the last one was the cult of the kicker. We all have our schemes. Everybody has their offensive scheme, their defensive scheme. Uh, you might not see success right away with your offensive or defensive scheme. Uh, special teams is an area where you could maybe give yourselves a chance uh, as far as uh, helping you uh, get a little uh, advantage here and there uh, in a program that might be struggling or uh, a big underdog. So where we looked to was we had a very good soccer program and in our relationships uh, with the soccer coach we were able to get kickers. And there was sort of a cult that became uh, the cult of our kicker and it helped us in the kicking game and give us advantages in certain games uh, that would paid huge dividends for us. And it was just something as easy as having a good relationship with the soccer coach and, and making it convenient for him. And we've had a number of kids kick 50-yard field goals, be excellent punters for us. And it just now became where every kid uh, that was in soccer wanted to give it a shot to be a kicker. And it was one less thing that you had to worry about. So an action plan uh, in place, 
Uh, these were the four things that we always wanted to do, was we wanted to show off our facilities in school. Um, you know, whatever, however your facilities are set up, uh, you just like anything, you got to identify the one positive thing you got going for you. And if there's something that might not be there, try to find something and show that off. So all the, uh, the open gyms we had in the winter, uh, the one-day camps that we had in the uh, spring uh, that I'll get to, we tried to do it so that the kids were able to see, and the parents, most importantly, were able to see the facility building. That was always kept clean, and we actually uh, needed to get people there to see it. Uh, the next thing was is always be uh, a community resource. Uh, going back to what I said, maybe that uh, with all the uh, people working to uh, grab that kid at the Pee Wee football level, there's those kids that aren't out for uh, football or youth football that ended up being hell, uh, heck of players for us. Uh, so those kids uh, were identified by the grammar school and middle school PE teacher. So having a connection with that PE teacher uh, that can I, you know, shoot you an email or get you in contact or hang up your flyers uh, in their gym uh, that will allow you to know what kids that are out there uh, that you can get out for football that aren't playing football at the youth level. Uh, game day experience, uh, as everybody uh, tries to do, is honor those youth programs at halftime or honor those youth programs uh, by getting into the games or uh, wearing their jersey and getting the hot dog or getting in the games there. Uh, and then finally, promotional flyers and posters. Uh, it's something as easy as you'll see that you could make on PowerPoint, Publisher, uh, Microsoft Word, uh, or in your case, if, if you have maybe a student that's on your football team that's great with graphic designs, that you can make it free of charge and you can get out the, uh, a flyer or a poster uh, with your schedule uh, out in the community, out in the grade schools, out in the middle schools and then marketing uh, your program to those kids and those families. So we're going to look through these next few slides here as just examples of this. And I know I'd mentioned a handful of times about the power of the pen and handwritten letters. And some of you may think, well, you know what, uh, I mean, that's a lot of work or, you know, having time to write all that. But this is a sample that's up here. Uh, the format is a little different because it's on PowerPoint. So it's, this was uh, created on Microsoft Word, but just as you could see, it's a quick little box that you could just write a quick thing and then jot your name down, coach so-and-so, that goes out there and makes a big impact. Uh, and as I said earlier, there were spot uh, years of success within this program, and you wanted to get anything possible to make your program uh, have a positive uh, sell or a positive view from those people in the community, and those kids and parents in the community. This was another uh, simple handwritten letter form that you could just write a quick note in there and it goes, uh, makes a huge difference uh, in uh, with whoever you're sending that to, whether it's the players that are in parents in your program right now or a kid you're in eighth grade that you're trying to come out for the football team for the first time. This uh, here is uh, the marketing plan and format uh, for dividing and uh, dividing and conquer uh, the coaches that are coaching with you and getting them out there just to show their face to that Pee Wee football team or maybe that middle school there in the spring where you're trying to pass out information or promote your program. Uh, myself, I just need something to keep me disciplined and something to keep me on course. And this was a way that we could set that up and be like, okay, here, week one, we were sending out these three coaches to these three teams or these three middle schools. And it just was a way that we needed some sort of format and organizational and system in place, all right, to keep us disciplined and keep us in this uh, marketing format. And real quick from the previous slide, it goes back that you were respectful to the time of the coaches, uh, to their family time. And they only, if you break it down, really had uh, two, two, uh, uh, two appearances uh, that they had to go out and just by organizing them people are like well this guy's uh, blanking in the community but then you're not overworking or overwhelming the coaches that are a part uh, you know with their families and a part of the staff this next one is like I said uh, we all start sending mailings out uh, some of us uh, maybe start earlier uh, some of us uh, uh, start later but this was just a way like I said a system that was in place 
uh, and what was going to get mailed out uh, to those eighth graders. Uh, we were able to get labels uh, from the district office that had those contact information. Uh, we maybe have gone out and uh, from football camps that we've had, uh, had addresses that we could send all this stuff out and put our uh, program and put our uh, logo in front of their face. And then this is just one of the promotional flyers that we had uh, that we hung up around school in order to get kids out and keep kids out for our team uh, in order to get eighth graders and coming eighth graders out. And it was a quick way that we took advantage of uh, all the opportunities that we had uh, to attend a spring game. And it just sort of shows them like, oh man, look at all the cool stuff that this program's doing here. And look at how here the kids are having fun and the kids are a part of something. And I want to be, you know, I want to be uh, on that team or a part of that program. Uh, quick uh, presentation to all the kids that, you know, you start to highlight. Uh, parents start to see this. Uh, they always comes up like, how's my kid going to... Uh, you know, what are you going to do for my kid or how are you going to get my kid to the college level? And this just sort of sends that out into the community that this is what you're doing. And it could be a Division three school and it could be a Division one school that's, uh, you know, playing in the Big Ten uh, or anywhere in between. And as we know, a lot of parents might not know that uh, difference, but once they see that kids are being uh, sent out uh, to the college level and helped uh, to the college level, uh, they get bought in and they, they sort of maybe, if they're on the fence, push their kid to be a part of the program. Uh, this is a quick flyer uh, for our summer youth program. Uh, what we, or, I'm sorry, our uh, spring program. One thing that we saw that uh, maybe could help you if you're in this type of situation, if there's other schools that are around that have these big established summer camps, is we did it one day. And we stole the idea, just like the colleges do, the one-day camp. And we had more success with that than having a three-day long uh, commitment uh, for a parent to bring the kid to the camp or going up against the more established camps. So it was a way for us to get kids there and get, like I said, uh, a T-shirt on them to make them walking billboards. Uh, and then the open gym uh, flyer. Biggest thing was... As you can see, these are simple things that you could create that you have available to you, uh, that you have access to, without even having to spend extra money, uh, without even having to create an extra resource or fundraiser within your program. Uh, next here is the marketing plan for our school and community. Uh, I know a lot of people are, uh, and I'm going to uh, touch on this one more, uh, big on social media right now. Uh, there's a social media presence for everybody's program, uh, whether that's on Twitter, Facebook, or any other so, uh, Instagram, all the social media uh, way coaches are doing that now. And what I did was I put the, uh, the uh, example over there on the side is we are always looking now because where we're at uh, in a lot of our situations is getting support from the community and namely getting support from local businesses. And these local businesses get hit up and many times uh, sort of become sour or, or, or like, what is it in for me? So what we tried to do was any uh, business and the big businesses uh, that supported the, the athletic department as a whole and then our uh, individual uh, football program bring two players out and then spotlight them with the managers or with the uh, workers uh, and post that picture thanking them and tagging their business on Twitter. And it was a huge, uh, uh, and it was something that was, you know, it was just a huge, it went a long way for us. And it was something that took uh, 25 to 30 minutes. And every kid, once they heard, uh, when they were going to the fast food places or the food places, uh, wanted to go because they got a free piece of pizza in this case, or, or something free, or, you know, they were hooked up there by the uh, manager. Uh, and it was a way to sort of show a genuine uh, thank you and then also they love the recognition that's out there because uh, it was tagged in the high school's uh, Facebook page and they knew that community was going to see something positive about their business and I think uh, some of the things that we've talked about here tonight if you're looking for maybe a way to grab like say protein for your off-season workouts this is a way that you can go out and sort of show evidence uh, to that business owner 
uh, that they're going to sort of uh, benefit from them supporting you. And then it w as we've done uh, with like everybody's done hallway promotional posters, uh, there's the staff functions, post game functions uh, to invite staff out, those teachers out uh, to make them feel a part of the program. And then also too, we had a TV productions class that we get we gave full access to, and we also felt like it did a great deal of uh, helping our kids out learn how to uh, communicate when they did interviews and. Uh, you know, inter, you know, get their face out there uh, in the cafeteria when they'd run that uh, production, uh, TV productions uh, in the cafeteria at lunch. All right, so you know, we've talked about retention with the players, and we've talked about program marketing, and to finish it all up here is the most important thing, and one of the biggest things is uh, retention of coaching staff. And as we know, and uh, I think two of the biggest things that you see why a program uh, struggle is high turnover with kids and high turnover with coaches uh, for whatever reason and uh, depending on uh, what obstacles those programs are facing. But I think the biggest thing that you, you want to get and you want to sort of, uh, in order to get buy-in uh, from the guys that you get to work with and coach with is this idea here that it's not my coaches or uh, you're not delegating something. And a quote that, uh, as you can see right there, is you don't delegate task. Uh, if you do, you're going to create just followers, and they're not going to have buy-in. Uh, you try to delegate authority, so you're creating leaders. Uh, and that's with the kids and coaches. And you know what? You step back, and you know what the strengths are of those guys that you're uh, coaching with, and you allow them to go and run with it. And maybe there's something that you're like, well, I don't necessarily, like, think that's like you know what I would do but you know in the long run that's going to increase buy-in and that's going to increase uh, the coaching staff's uh, leadership abilities so what we try to do is create program coordinators and we knew the strengths and interest of all the coaches and then we wanted to step back and allow them uh, to run with it and take chances and some of it worked some of it we had to revise and uh, the biggest thing where these were some ideas uh, that you could do to be a, a program coordinator. And I know like we sort of were like, well, you know, you're going to delegate someone to be in charge of equipment. Well, who really wants to be in charge of equipment? So there was something uh, I took on as the, uh, the head coach. But there was guys that were uh, excited about technology, excited about huddle, uh, excited about doing some sort of fundraising event uh, with the uh, teaching staff that you had at an establishment or were really into seven on seven, or really got into uh, the incentive program. So these were all ways that you needed to sort of find uh, to tap into their strengths, to tap into their interest in order to increase buy-in. Uh, the next thing too is this, is I know uh, all of us are big on having that consistency and continuity uh, within the program. Um, freshmen running the same thing all the way up to varsity and that is one of the big that's one of the toughest things uh, to get going uh, in a program uh, guys are confident in what they're able to teach or you might walk into a situation where it's like these were the guys that we're going to coach with here and they're already been in the program and they're sort of uh, more confident in running this tortoise sort of scheme so the biggest thing was sort of having uh, a way to build their confidence and maybe a little tweak that you want to change and then also making them feel like they're being respected and that their hard work uh, is being identified and spotlighted as well and then also trying to have some fun uh, and going back be respectful of their time with their family so sort of in-house clinics towards the end of the year uh, gathering everybody together allowing a quick and it doesn't have to be a long production but just a quick you know, if a freshman coach uh, found a quarterback drill, uh, having them the opportunity to talk for 10, 15 minutes on that quarterback drill and then adapting that uh, across the board. And then that sophomore coach may have saw a linebacker drill or saw uh, an agility drill or a competition drill that they're all excited about. Uh, and then allowing them uh, to talk about that for a quick 10, 15 minutes at this in-house staff clinic. Uh, and is you know we we like to do and get together uh, pizza and wings and not make it like this formal uh, staff meeting uh, and, you know where uh, you're sitting at the head of the table and instead we're all in this together 
and we're allowing everybody's voice to be heard and to have fun with it. So these were just ways that we went out to develop uh, a, uh, leadership within the coaches and also uh, buy in uh, from the coaches. And as a result, you give yourselves a chance uh, to retain guys because we know the importance of continuity. So I, I appreciate uh, your time today. Hopefully you got one or two things out of this. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, whatever questions you may have, please contact me. Uh, we're always stealing from each other, sharing with each other. I'll give you whatever you need. Uh, that's my contact information again. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity from Chief Pigskin. Uh, it's a great system and setup that they have going here. And I want to wish you all uh, the best of luck here in this winter off season and headed into the summer and the next season. Thank you.